Okay, hi everyone. Thanks for coming. And today we'll be talking about my latest research. It's called uh, Using Hippocampal Replay to Consolidate Experiences in this Memory Augmented Reinforcement Learning. So I'm quite interested in this area because I'm trying my best to, you know, the brain is something that, that learns pretty quickly. Like we can learn a new skill quite fast. We can learn how to do something new, something novel, like by observing, by just like interacting with the world just a tiny little bit. But imagine if you use a reinforcement learning agent and you put it into an environment, it will do for a million trials. Like, you know, for parking, they have a simulator where they try to park. They took like a million trials and the agent still cannot park perfectly yet. But for humans, how do we learn how to park so easily? For driving, we basically observe how people park and then we know how the wheel leads to certain things. We learn how to do like object associations and stuff like that. Okay, but that's beyond the scope of today. Uh, this research is really very fundamental, very basic. Uh, it's basically trying to answer the question like, how can we like as humans without dying or uh, like failing in an environment, how can we within our means okay, learn how to do something and remember how to do it? So the key thing is you need to survive, okay? Because a lot of the simulations, um, the agents end up like failing or I mean losing a life or something like that. In real life, you only have one life. So how do we use this kind of, like is there a way to learn experiences and to consolidate this kind of experiences so that we are able to learn from number one, as few observations as possible and number two, without like killing ourselves in the process. So that's the key aims. So let me begin. So for the, for the most of your, I mean, if you don't know about reinforcement learning, a reinforcement learning agent typically uses like something like a reward. So let me just draw for you a, a few states here. So this is like your start state. And then maybe you travel to another state. Can you see my orange drawing, by the way? Give me a, like a thumbs up if you can see it. Yes. Okay, thanks. So you, you have a start state and then you go all the way to the goal state like that. Okay, so usually what will happen is, let's say you have multiple like states you can go to. Usually what will happen is for reinforcement learning agent, you just try randomly all these things. And then once you reach the goal state, okay, something like Q learning will do this. Okay, we will basically, every time we visit a state, we will back propagate. Okay, let, let's say this is a reward one. We'll back propagate this, then this will be like 0 0.99, like a discount factor. And then you back propagate the state here again to be like 0 0.99 square and so on. So at each state, because of the way you visit it, you back propagate it. Okay, this back propagation only happens like when you visit, like when you when you visit the next state, you back propagate backwards to this one. Yeah. So it is quite inefficient because like in order to back propagate one state like that, you need to visit this state here. So imagine you want to back propagate from this part all the way to the starting, right? You need to do it in one pass. The first pass is this one. The second pass will be this one. You need to back propagate this one. Then you need to back then you need to back propagate this one. So you need to basically for a, an environment with let's say uh, three nodes or three state transitions, you need three attempts to back prop reward all the way to the start. Okay, that's, that's because of the nature of the reward update. And imagine if you have this kind of environment called a sparse environment, sparse reward environment, where basically you only get the reward like maybe after a million time steps. So you need to do this environment a million times before you can get the reward back propagated all the way to the beginning. So in cases like this, it seems to be the case that the reward signal alone for learning, just using the reward signal, is not sufficient because it takes very long to learn for it. And indeed, you see on the diagram on the right, okay, I encourage you all to take a look at the Montezuma Revenge video another time. Okay, I, I didn't put the video today. Okay, so the idea is you have to like collect some keys, go to some doors and so on. So the thing is the reward only comes quite some time later. Like you need to get a key first, then you go to the door, then only then you get some points. Yeah, so for this kind of environments, just using this reward alone may take forever to learn. Okay, so that's my first point here. So we're trying to do some, we try to take some insights from this approach 
Okay, to be honest, when I first started doing the research, I was thinking quite independently. I, I, I didn't think I'll go explore. But then eventually I was searching for ideas. I came across Go Explore and it kind of matched what I want to do, the memory mechanism that they are employing. Okay, so why is Go Explore? So Go Explore uses a memory in order to augment this reward signal so that you can like learn long sequences of events without needing to like do these simulations like n number of times for n transitions. You can basically skip some part of the, uh, you can basically skip ahead. So like let's say, you have like the same three states again. Okay, in order to explore like all four states, okay, we, we don't have to start from the beginning. So their key insights like that. We don't have to start from the beginning. We can start halfway. We can jump to a state that we want to start to and then we can explore from that state. So in some sense, it's like you are teleporting to the state in the middle so that you can expand your horizon like over here. So like past reinforcement learning algorithms, they might get stuck somewhere in the front. Like they might explore a lot of other states here. And then, you know, sometimes these states are the ones that are like, this is the correct state. These are the good states. But because you need to explore so many states at the beginning, you don't get to explore your good states at the end. So Go Explore tries to jump towards the states at the end, uh, nearer to the good stuff. And then you can explore there and hopefully solve the environment. So indeed, they got like one of the world record for this game on Dezuma Revenge. And it is because of this way of doing memory mechanisms. Okay, so this is just a bit of a like recap. I have a, I have a video on Go Explore, but the idea behind Go Explore is that they, I mean, even if we have like traditional agents with intrinsic reward, so their intrinsic reward is different from the intrinsic reward I'm using later. This intrinsic reward is like giving you some bonus for exploration. Okay, so let's say you explore all this purple area. Okay, so the intrinsic reward is like used up already. Okay, it means that there's no more bonus for the agent to explore there. So what the agent does next is the agent explores the other area here. However, because of all this intrinsic reward being used up, okay, the agent is unable to go back to this area here. Okay, because the if you use like some form of explore, exploit, it will just keep going round and round and round. It, it may not reach this state here, but maybe this is the goal state that you want to reach. So the problem with that is that you can't really jump to this state here. You can't jump here. That's why maybe you can't solve the environment, even if you use this kind of intrinsic reward. Okay, but later on, the intrinsic reward I'm introducing is a goal-directed one. So it doesn't diminish. So later, later I'll explain what I, uh, what I was thinking. So this, this is one of the reasons why Go Explore was created, because they wanted to jump to a profitable state. So this is just some examples of like how how current algorithms, you don't know this like epsilon greedy, you have a random randomness that will de derail you from going to a state. Uh, this upper confidence bounce, uh, I'm using this for the later go explore here. There's also this term exploration that can derail you also because you explore, you may miss out on following that very narrow path. Okay, then for policy-based methods, you have this like entropy term here that you can actually use it to encourage exploration. And it might also make you derail, so you can't go back to a good state. So the solution that was proposed by them is to jump to a state and then explore from there. Okay. So far, so good. So this is the analogy for Go Explore. This, all this I recap. This, this is not my, my work, okay, but I illustrated this. So let's say you can only explore about this amount because of your exploration parameter. So with Go Explore, you can explore a bit more because you can teleport to this state. So instead of starting from here, direct, you can just teleport straight over here and then you can explore again. Then you can like maybe go to the next state here and then you can explore again from that state, teleport, 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 and eventually reach your goal. So this is because it's very difficult to get the reward signal. So you can do this kind of method in order to reach the goal more effectively. Okay, but later, I'll show like some of the things that I was thinking of. Okay, actually, I realized you don't even need to teleport. You can just straight away start from the start state and reach the goal state by using a very clever mechanism to update your memory. So let's begin. So some of the agents I'm using for this, uh, this research is like random agent is basically just choose a random move. Go explore is the, the one that I described earlier. So you go to a state, teleport to a state, and then you explore from there. Okay, but I use a deterministic way of selecting it. 
Okay, so go explore count is basically using the count based method. Later, I'll show you the, the selection function to select a state to go to and to select a state to explore. Okay, so basically it's the same as go explore because I already used the selection function for the go part. So I use the selection function for both go and the explore. Okay. For go explore, this part is random. The explore part is random. Okay, and then finally the explore count. So I was thinking, is there really a need to you know, teleport to a state? Can we just start from the beginning if we do some clever memory updates? And so that's explore counts. So this is basically, we remove the go phase. There's no more go phase. We straight away start from the beginning and we explore all the way to the end. Okay, so this is the, these are the agents. And like, how, how do we explore? Okay, so this is something that is, uh, it may be unfamiliar to you if you haven't heard of the Monte Carlo research. But the idea is that, you know, if you, you think about yourself, okay, uh, let's say, for example, you are in a room, you're trying to navigate to the door. All right. So you are in a room here. Okay. And you want to navigate to the door. Okay. One way to do it is to, is to explore randomly. Okay. Do you think if you explore randomly the room and then you try to reach the door, will you take a long time to reach the door? You probably would, right? So one way to improve this is to do some form of explore exploit. So basically, like you already know, like let's say this step here is quite good. So we proceed to reach this good step, good stage first. We proceed to reach here first. Like for example, uh, so you prioritize. Okay, should I return to something good, or should I explore something new? So this part here is the something good. So this is the something good part. And then this one is the something new part. So basically, you will basically choose, okay, should I try to do something different or should I try to do something familiar? Or is that trying to give me good rewards? So this actually beats random exploration because you have some form of, this is like the directed part. This tells you like which, which area is good. You generally try to head towards that area and then you explore based on uh, after heading there. So this explore exploit has some form of, of um, bias in selection. Okay, so we use that as opposed to the random uh, exploration in Go Explore. And what, what, what is used here? This is basically the reward signal of the environment. Okay, in this case, because we are considering sparse reward settings, uh, usually this reward is zero. So this part actually is as good as like zero most of the time. Okay, we do have another part called moves. Okay, so earlier remember that uh, go explore, you actually need to go to uh, a state. So which state should you explore from? Okay, so maybe I ask someone a question here. So maybe uh, Evan, yeah. You know, if you do go explore, okay, and then this is like your good state. This is your good state here. And this is your start state here. Will you prefer to start like at this location here at the start point? Or will you prefer to start like one step before the goal state over here? If you can choose to be teleported somewhere to reach the goal, will you want to start from point one or point two? Yeah, uh, Evan, you there? So uh, we want to start from point one or point two. If the idea is to reach the goal, we would rather be starting from this node here or starting from this node here, number two. Okay, uh, it's all right. So uh, the, the thing is, I think most, most of y'all would prefer to start from number two. Okay, because over here you can reach the goal state quicker. Okay, it's nearer the goal state. So this over here, this moves here, prioritize us to reach the goal faster. So that's the idea of this moves part. So we use a explore, sorry, exploit and explore kind of uh, mechanism in order to choose the states uh, and choose those states that are better suited to reach the goal. So like some of the, the terms here, rewards the environment reward, 
the moves is the number of moves to reach that particular state. So the higher the number of moves, that means the further down the trajectory it is. The number of times you select a state, okay, then the number of times you visit the state. Okay. So yeah, this is basically similar to upper confidence bounds and encourages greedy action selection in the long run. Okay, so what are the environments I use in this uh, research? So we use two separate environments. One is called the unwalled maze, where we basically generate bricks. So it's a grid, like here is 10 by 10. It can be any arbitrary size. And now uh, we have 10% of it is bricks. So bricks you cannot travel to. So the bricks are, or obstacles are the black color ones. So your agent needs to like travel something like that. You cannot reach, you cannot touch, you cannot go to the bricks. So the agent can go up, down, left, right. And the idea is to reach the goal, which is the door. And you get a reward of one if you reach the door and reward of zero if you go anywhere else. So this is a sparse reward problem because it's very difficult to reach the wall. So like even for the wall maze, wall, wall maze is even harder because wall maze you need to like go only in that narrow door like that. So in this setting, actually a lot of the traditional algorithms like the PD, temporal difference, Q learning all fail. Okay, even at the 10 by 10, they fail already. That's why we only compare the results and we only show the results of, of the go explore and the variance that we propose. Okay, so this is the reason why. Okay, it's very difficult to backpropagate this reward. And we have to use some form of like memory mechanism to bypass the lack of memory. Okay. So how do we do the memory updates? So the memory updates are quite simple. Uh, for every state that we transit to, okay, for each explore state, we will, we will store the trajectory of the actions to reach it. So basically the sequence of moves you take to reach that state. Okay, and the number of moves we take to reach the state, the reward, which is like the to total accumulated reward so far. Okay, the number of selections in the goal phase. Okay, basically, how many times have you selected that state to be teleported to? And then the number of visits in the explore phase, which is basically the number of times we have explored that state while we do our, um, when we do our, when we run the environment, how many times have you visited that state already? Okay, so basically, these two, will tell us how many times we have visited the state or selected the state. The more times means we have seen that state more. So in our explore exploit equation earlier, we want to try to minimize the number of visits and selections we have. So a cell that or a state that is not visited much or not selected much can be a more promising state. Okay, because it may, it may be unexplored and it might contain something new compared to something you've already seen a lot of times. So this tool is to help with the exploration part. So we update, every time we visit a state, we update. When we select it in the goal phase, we update the selection count by one. When we visit it in the explore phase, we update the visit count by one. And then for the next state, we update the memory of the next state, okay? If, okay, the current trajectory that we, that we have has a higher reward, which means that it's a better trajectory that we update it. Or it has the same reward, but a shorter trajectory, more efficient because it's a shorter trajectory. Then we also update the memory and this, is basically good because if you explore enough in the long run, the only thing that is stored in your memory are the best performing sequences. So it guarantees you to have optimality in the long run if you explore enough. Okay, but remember when I said earlier, we don't want to explore all the way. We only want to explore enough so that you will succeed most of the time. Okay, And then you can explore within that boundary that you must succeed and you try to repeat your successes as much as possible. So that's, that's the idea. So, and in order to do that, we use this um, part that it comes from neuroscience. Okay, so this one, I think Grace was interested also. So this part on the neuroscience is basically how we learn from rats or learn from the human brain. Actually, human brain also does something like this. This is called hippocampal replay. So this is actually known as the sharp wave ripple pattern. And over here, we actually, I extract this from uh, one of the nature articles, also on PubMed. Uh, this few authors, basically, they went to measure the hippocampal replay in mice. And what they found is that for mice, you look at this mouse here, going through a colored um, walkway. What it does is that it actually, from this point of time here, it actually replaced the experiences it took to come to that state itself. It replaced, so it does a pre-play, and then after that, it does a replay like that. From the start 
to let's say the goal state and then from the goal state to the start state again so like what's the use of this hippocampal replay like a lot of things in reinforcement learning sometimes they talk about hippocampal replay but they don't actually do this forward and backward they do like random selection or prioritize selection i think there's a there's, there's a reason why like in mice or in humans the hippocampal replay is done like that okay so just purely on the states visitor alone i think what is happening okay so this is a guess is that the memory mechanism in our brains are trying to update like all the states in order like state one state two state three state four so it may not have a list of states that that he has been to so we are trying to update that entire list of states and then we play it backwards okay so as to like do some credit assignment some back propagation of rewards if if any okay so like if you use like intrinsic rewards later i show you like you can also back propagate your intrinsic rewards here Right. So the idea is you retrieve your states in the pre-play and then in the replay, you do something to the memory of that states. And what I propose okay, is that maybe because if this is a successful sequence of actions, in the replay step, maybe we want to reset all this to zero, like make the state more preferential to visit to. So in some sense, this state selection and visit counts is something like a reward okay, because Remember, we have the explore exploit equation. This state visit and selection counts actually are in the explore part. So if we reset the counts to zero, it means that we make the state very novel, very interesting to explore because we, we it appears like we haven't explored that state before. So you can create something called I call an exploration highway, where we can explore the states that are more promising again and again and again because we keep doing this hippocampal replay for, uh, for interesting states. So this is something that I was thinking of. And yeah, I coded it out. Uh, there's also this part here that's the forward hippocampal replay where we have a goal state that we haven't reached yet. That's called G prime. And then your current position is current prime, C prime. So we have a C prime and a G prime here. So we can actually do a replay of states that we haven't visited before. And I think this has something to do with planning. So like you can, you can like imagine possible futures and then you can even learn from what you imagine. So this is something quite interesting because you haven't experienced this purple state yet, but you can imagine yourself going there and then you can learn from it. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I didn't implement this in this work. I just focus on this part here, but the forward replay part can be pretty cool. So this is something um, interesting that you probably can do in the future. So yeah, I pause here for a while. Any questions on this hippocampal replay part? Because this is the main thing of this research. You're, you're good to go. If, if good to go, just give me maybe a thumbs up. Uh, I have a doubt. Uh, can you go to the previous slide? Okay. So you uh, for updating the next state, you say if it has a higher reward or a shorter trajectory, right? What yes. if, um, there is a higher reward for a longer trajectory? Okay. So if there's a higher reward for a longer trajectory, what will happen is like this. So let me just draw out for you like certain pathway. So you have pathway one, right? Pathway one and you have pathway two. And both of them reach the same state, right? Yeah. So one state, as you said, this is a longer, longer trajectory, but higher reward, right? Long, but in higher reward. Okay. And then this one is like the, the normal one. Like maybe you maybe this one is only five steps long, and this one is maybe 10 steps long. So what will happen is when you do your exploration, if you if you come over here at first, okay, and then maybe here the reward is just like one. Okay, and over here the reward is maybe two. So if you do your exploration at first, the memory over here will be stored with reward one plus the sequence of moves here. Okay, because this is the first thing that we saw. Okay, subsequently, if we explore enough, we reach this long pathway here. Then this similar state here, let's call this state S prime. Okay, this S prime will have a higher reward of two because the next state look ahead, like for example, when you are on this previous state, you do a simulation look ahead. You realize that, oh, actually when I reach this similar S prime, my reward is actually two, but the memory itself only has one. So what will happen? We have a higher reward now. So we will update this S prime with this long trajectory instead because the reward is higher. 
Yeah, yeah. Does that answer the question? Yeah. Yeah. So so essentially, if you have transited that pathway, and that pathway has high reward, regardless of the length of your trajectory, if it reaches the same state, you will update that state with the high reward. So the reward comes first before the, the length of the trajectory. Okay. Yeah. So actually, this is something like A star search because like you want to maximize the or maximize the cost or minimize the cost. That that comes as the first priority. Then after that, maybe if you want to, you can have a tiebreaker for the number of moves. Okay, maybe maybe not A star. A star doesn't have tiebreaker for moves, but but the idea is yeah, the, the primary thing that we're interested in is the reward. Okay. Yeah, and then this hippocampal replay just helps to repeat the successful trajectories again and, and again using uh, this exploration highway. So let me just show you the exploration highway. So this is like a hypothetical uh, an, an analysis of what happens. So like, let's say this is, oops, sorry. This is your, this is your person, the, the agent. The agent transits down like this red path. It has discovered this red path. Okay, but you know, in the exploit exploit equation, after you visit a state, you increment your visit count by one, right? So it means that this state is no longer as enticing as before to visit because it's not new anymore. It's not novel. So how do I recreate that novel experience so that the algorithm can prioritize visiting, uh, prioritize visiting, visiting it again? So the idea is using the pre-play to consolidate the states and then the replay to make them all zero. We create this green color, which is high value states where it's very enticing for the agent to go to using the exploit exploit equation. So you create this green color thing and you can see that we actually prioritize going over here. So essentially, if let's say all these states don't have any connections, you will keep repeating the same pathway again and again. I mean, it makes sense also because like sometimes like in humans, you learn a certain skill, even though it may not be the most efficient, you keep repeating that skill again and again, or you keep repeating that habit again and again. I don't know about y'all, but like sometimes when you make something into a habit, even though you know it's not the most optimal, but you kind of somehow just keep repeating the same set of actions again. So I'm trying to recreate that kind of learning. I mean, humans are not efficient. Let's put it that way. Okay, we want our AI systems to be efficient, but as a result, they take very long to learn. So yet I'm trying to bring back that human element back into AI. Okay, by putting this simple camper replay, we try to make the states very enticing, but then you might repeat the same set of states again. Okay, I mean, there's some exceptions. Okay, I mean, if let's say this part is a green state, okay, because of the way we do exploit, exploit, you might be able to get to this green state and go directly here. So you can actually like cut short one. You can cut short this part here. So like this part here, you may you may omit this, this area because like if, you, if you're this state here is a green color state, yeah, this state is a green color state, this part here might come with like greater number of moves. Okay, you may be able to just bypass this whole thing altogether. Let me just use a thicker line. You may be able to bypass this whole thing like that. Yeah, so instead of going one round like that, if let's say your green states are connected to each other, you might be able to bypass it like that. Okay, so uh, although it's called the exploration highway, it still allows for some form of deviation from the path. Okay, provided it is like going to another part that is of a similar like angle, right? Because this is a highway, so you, you can find the, the path like that. So you can optimize within a very narrow range. So you will succeed most of the time. You won't die. You will keep you will keep learning, you keep repeating the action, but then you can actually become more and more better. You might you might be better the more times you try it, because like you will get like the shorter pathway as your as your highway. So the next time you repeat the hippocampal replay, this shorter pathway becomes your highway. Yeah. Questions for this? Yeah, I think this is the main slide for whatever I'm sharing today. So this is the main crux of, yeah. Okay, Grace asks, what if there are multiple trajectories with equal levels of reward and distance length? So that's a very good question. Uh, okay, so for my, the way I implemented the hippocampal replay is just very basic. I just take the first, learn trajectory and I just keep using it. Yeah, so if there are like shorter trajectories, actually the best way is to like do some form of ranking of whatever path that is successful and then just replay only the shortest path. So there could be another step that is done before 
yeah, so so you could do some form of ranking mechanism to to rank which path is the best, and then you replay that path. Yeah, so yeah, thanks for the question. Yeah, so the idea really use the explore exploit to make a more efficient uh, way to explore the environment, and then use hippocampal replay to try to force your explore exploit to visit the successful states. Okay, because if you use the pure explore exploit for hippocampal replay, it's going to go all over the place after a while. Okay, can I move on? All right, yeah, keep the questions going. It, 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 it's very uh, helpful, thanks. All right, I'll move to my next slide. So this is the re results. Okay, so bear with me here, it's a bit uh, convoluted, but let me just sh show you what, what this is. So over here, we have the random agent, uh, just taking a random move. Okay, the first one is the unwalk maze. Unwalk maze is, maybe I'll show you what the unwalk maze is again. Unwalk maze is, is this one, this one with no walls. I mean, there may be walls, but these are all randomly arranged bricks. So the walk maze is with walls like that, four chambers and one narrow passageway. So, so for the random agent, okay, this is what happens. Uh, in the random agent itself, all right, um, the ra random agent will just take a random valid move. And the soft rate, actually, surprisingly, even for like the 100 by 100, so this is 100 by 100, Okay, bear in mind this 100 by 100, even for like Q learning, TD learning, like traditional R approaches, they all actually fail to solve. Okay, I, I maybe unwalk maze they can still solve, some of them, but walk maze definitely all of them fail to solve. So it's only between like it's, it's the go explore kind of methods that can solve it already. So these are very difficult. If you look at a neuroscience kind of like paper, the kind of maze that they do, right, is only 13 by 13. And they call it a hard exploration problem already for 13 by 13, which is because they are using the traditional reward-based method to learn. And for that kind of method, 13 by 13 is considered difficult to solve already. But here we can go up to 100 by 100. So I just want to emphasize, okay, that this method is quite performant. It can even go 1,000 by 1,000 if you want to. 10,000 by 10,000 a second. It's just, it takes quite long to run. But it will, it will find a solution somehow after enough times. Okay, so the idea is, we're going to see how reliable or how consistent the agent is. So we allow the agent to accumulate its experiences. So let's imagine you're planted in an environment and I let you go and do it, uh, go and do your task. Can you repeat that task successfully many times? Okay, most reinforcement learning agents take quite some time before they can repeat it. So how do we uh, measure like how consistent it is? I just use soft rate. So like you repeat the environment 100 times, letting you take, over all the memory from the previous few times you, you um, go in that environment. And then basically just ask you, how many times have you solved the environment out of that 100 times? So this is the solve rate. So it's like consistency. So let me just write a word here. So this is like consistency. And then like we want to see how efficient you are. So this is the first solve. So basically at which run do you solve your environment? So the earlier the better, of course. So we want to to rate our environment, uh, environments by efficiency. This is also efficiency, the number of steps to solve, because number of steps to solve means how short your solution is. So the shorter, the better. So over here, we can see like the, the ones in bold are the ones that have the better results. So let's take a look. Okay, this hippocampal replay means, uh, has hippocampal replay, and this one without means doesn't. Okay, so if you can look at it, you see that go explore. If I use the deterministic method to do the go state, it doesn't work. Okay, but if you do like the probabilistic method, maybe it will still work. Just that it will take like quite some time. And the probabilistic method doesn't guarantee that uh, you are consistent anyway. So this go exploit is really not the best method to use to, to do this kind of exploit exploit. Okay, so go explore count using the count based method to explore generally does quite well. Like 78 out of 78 out of 100 times it solves the environment. With people can by replay, you see, with the exploration highway, it solves all the time. So this is pretty cool. And the thing is, same thing for explore count and we have a count of people can replay. This, this wins. People can replay has more consistent performance. Okay, but both of these approaches, this go explore count and explore count, this both perform better than go explore. Okay, so it means that the explore exploit mechanism is working. So another thing to take note is that actually with people can replay, you realize that the minimum number of steps here is actually higher than that without hippocampal replay. So you look over here. So what this means, this means actually that 
our agent is not actually the, the most efficient. Yeah, so you cannot use this method if you want to play Go, you want to play chess. Basically, you want to value efficiency of your move. Make every move like very good. You can use this method that I'm proposing. This method just allows you to, to solve an environment enough so that you can survive. So if you want to do something that can like optimize like the best way to solve this problem, then this is not the method to use. Because you see the efficiency wise for the steps, it, it does because of the way it does less exploration. You are only limited to the exploration highway. You actually require more steps to solve the problem. Yeah, in generally more steps. I mean, in some cases you can go lesser, but in general you use more steps. Okay, same thing for ward maze. Ward maze, you see the same trend. Okay, the minimum steps take a bit longer. But the idea is that you will solve it reliably almost all the time. And you see, even here, you can solve it all at the first run, which is quite remar remarkable. Yeah. Questions for this? Okay, so this one, uh, hyperparameter tuning effects. Uh, I, I actually did a little bit more work because one of the reviewers said, okay, what are the different components of your equation doing? So let's take a look. Okay, we have three parts of the equation. We have this alpha, kappa, and gamma. So earlier I said that these two are for exploit. Okay, this reward is the environment reward. This is like how close, the number of moves is like how close you are to the goal, maybe the exploration frontier. And then this part here is basically the explore term, like how many uh, states have we, how many times have we visited that state? If we have visited it a lot of times, we will deprioritize it because we have visited it many times and we want to explore something different. So uh, first up, I just want to highlight the term of the reward. So this reward thing only works right when there's uh, dense rewards. That means like different states got different rewards. But in the environments we consider, there's only reward of one. So maybe as a future work, I'll do like some environments with dense rewards, see whether it works. I think it should work because this is like a standard exploit exploit kind of equation. So Firstly, we want to know that uh, reward term is not significant. So I put an X over here. So all these ablation studies work regardless of your reward because the reward is zero most of the time. Then we do the move term. So the move terms is to tell you the exploration frontier. So if we take a move at zero, we can see that actually it means that we don't know what how, how close we are to the goal. So this go explore method is, is cannot work at all because um, we don't know how close we are to the goal. Uh, but if we use the explore count method, which starts from the start state, it doesn't matter how many moves there are because like you will start from the beginning. So you don't have to do a state selection. So it can still work for explore methods. Okay, but it being at one, okay, um, it being at one actually is better because you your go explore methods can work as well. Okay, once you reach a value of 10, okay, when you reach a value of 10, Unfortunately, this term overpowers this term overpowers this term. Okay, which means that you're, you exploit too much. You keep visiting the same states again and again. And so this explore go explore method doesn't work as well. So you can see that the go explore method is quite volatile to the equation. Okay, but the explore count is more versatile. I mean it works most of the time. You see, it still, it still, it still solves, even with this term. So usually the move term should be just at one. You don't want to overpower the equation. Okay. You want it to just like be a tiebreaker. Okay. Then you want your this term to be bigger usually than your moves equation. So the exploration term. Okay. If let's say I use a different color. If let's say we use an exploration term of zero, we solve nothing. <laughs> so it means that the exploration term is very important. Remember the exploration highway? The exploration term really creates this highway. And if you put exploration term of zero, your hippocampal replay is as good as nothing. And you see, it doesn't even solve. The, the, the exploit exploit doesn't work because there's no explore anymore. You just exploit all the way. You keep getting stuck at the same states. So uh, if you look at like, if we have it at one, uh, it's not too bad. You have it at 10. Actually, it, uh, for this environment, it actually solves more. So you actually can have a more consistent solution with a higher, uh, exploration term or rather higher the exploration term because like you you don't explore that much if you have a high high value here so what you can see is that you have more consistent solving but you're at the expense of a less efficient solution you see over here you compare this explore count 3094 to this 2510 this is 
less efficient. I mean, you can compare the rest also, they are all less efficient compared to their counterparts, which means that a higher exploration term, you can get, a, you, you basically get a not as efficient solutions, but you can get more, more consistent solutions. So these are the ablation. For, for the ones that I use for the, uh, the first part, I put the re reward part as 10, the most part is one, and the, this exploration part is 10. So basically this one, I use this one because this is the overall best performance for the consistency. Okay. Ah, okay, so this last part, right, this last part actually is not in the paper. Uh, this is something that I'm actually uh, interested in and I'm doing this quite actively right now. So it is related to the idea of the room again. Okay, I would like to ask you all to imagine, okay, if you were now seated in the middle of your room, okay, and if you want to head towards the door, okay, to your door, okay, would you head directly to the door in, your, in one line? Okay, do a thumbs up if you will head directly to the door in one line. Okay, very good. Most of y'all will hit. Because like most agents, what they do is like they do random, random, random. And then they'll take very long. They might take decades. Okay, not, not really decades, but they take super long before you can reach the, the door. So I was thinking something is wrong with current AI. Like we are supposed to hit towards this part here. Okay, so maybe we don't have it explicitly in our environment. Some environments have it explicitly. But I believe in order to solve it, like even for Alpha Tensor, the recently the one from uh, DeepMind, they also use some form of intrinsic reward that is goal directed. They use how complicated the tensor is at the end. That's like some form of goal directed intrinsic reward. So this goal directed intrinsic reward guides your action towards the shortest path or towards like towards a general direction. Like if you are navigating the forest, you see a tower over there. You roughly know, okay, I need to go to that tower, but I don't know how to go there but I at least have some point of guidance. So I try to introduce this term that can, can do that. So this is a potential function term. So a potential function term is different from a bonus term that is on that cell. And then once you go to that cell, you collect some of the bonus and the bonus will go away after a while. That is a no-no, that is, that is bad. Because after a while, you will face that problem that I showed earlier. Where's that problem? Let me repeat that slide again. After a while, you'll face this problem. Your area that you are supposed to go to has no reward anymore, no intrinsic reward, which means that it's very hard for you to get back to this green color area here in, in, in number four. So in order to prevent that from happening, we can use this goal directed intrinsic reward. We can go straight to the goal, but this reward will never diminish because it is a potential function. It is based on like the distance from your current state to the goal, and that is always a constant, provided your goal is visible. So this only works for uh, perfect information. Yeah, uh, imperfect. I haven't thought of it, but the idea is if you can see where the tower is in the forest, the distance to it is the gauge, the heuristic they use to gauge it is always the same. So this is like a kind of heuristic. And do take note, this kind of reward is not the solution. Okay, it only serves as a guide. Oops, sorry. It only serves as as a guide. It doesn't tell us how to go to the endpoint. Okay, because you will still need to find like if it's a maze, you need to find the exit but you can see, oh, the tower is all the way here. So I should try to head towards there as much as possible. So how do we do that in the maze environments? Okay, the, the idea that I was thinking of is you just need a sort of a distance. And in this case, the distance from the agent to your door, okay, is, you can use a Manhattan distance. So Manhattan distance is like the horizontal squares plus the vertical squares, like how many squares this is. So is this 10 plus 10, this is actually 20, a Manhattan distance of 20. Yeah, so this Manhattan distance can tell you like how close you are to the to the door. I can't remember is it 20 or 19, but yeah, the idea of Manhattan this over here is it should be 20, yeah, 20, 10 plus 10. Yeah. So it tells you how close you are to the door. Okay, so it may not be the direct path because you can see over here, you cannot go through this black color one. So you need to go through like that. Or I mean there are many ways to solve this, but the idea is you cannot go directly like that. But using the goal director intrinsic reward, we can at least know roughly how close you are. It may be wrong. The reward might not be helpful. Like over here, you see? You find the, the intrinsic goal director intrinsic reward, like maybe of this square, is actually um is actually better than you know, um maybe say this square. 
Yeah, but the thing is, we cannot go here like that. So eventually, you need to find a way to go through this passageway. So sometimes your goal directed intrinsic reward may actually harm you because you keep trying to go here. Imagine if this is a, like a narrow passageway, you can go forever, but then like you are blocked at the end, then you need to backtrack. So your goal directed intrinsic reward cannot be everything. You still need to have some exploit exploit, but hopefully this goal directed intrinsic reward can help to guide you to the goal state faster, like going to the door. Hopefully it can guide you to the door faster. Okay, but what will happen? Okay, what will happen if, if, if it's like that? I don't know if you all have ever faced this before, but let's say you have a target destination you want to go here. You walk all the way to the target destination that you realize there's a roadblock, right? Then you need to like walk one big round to the other side, maybe reach here. Have you all faced that before? Like construction work, you want to go to a certain place and it's suddenly at the last part is a roadblock. Okay, but, but that doesn't matter because like at least you got somewhere near there. And then you could at least like reroute yourself again. So I, I've always been thinking like for the human mind, you know, we don't exactly need to get the reward of going to that area. So like, for example, getting to the door, you'll get real of one. Actually, the human mind may not work on this principle, is it? Like if you get closer and closer to your goal, you may already get the reward. Like you think of people going for like Olympic medalists. Do they need to get the reward to feel satisfied? I mean, of course you feel happy getting the reward, but if you don't even get the Olympic medal, but you keep training, you must be motivated somehow by another kind of reward. You cannot just use the end state to reward you. Maybe you use like, oh, I'm better than my, myself the previous day, that kind of thing. Yeah. So we don't exactly need to like reach the goal to get a reward. So this goal director intrinsic reward is like a proxy of maybe like how humans motivate ourselves. Like we get closer to the goal, we feel happier, even without even reaching the goal. This potential function to the goal here is already enough to make us feel happy. So this is just an idea. Okay, this is an idea I have. All right. Okay, okay, this. All right, so let's just go through the results for GDR. So this is like one of my last few slides already before I end. So in most situations, so we compare the Go Explore count to the Go Explore GDR, and all of them have hippocampal replay. The top one is for the unwalled maze, and the bottom is for the walled maze. And actually, all of them, um, what, what happens is actually all of them already use hippocampal replay, which means they already have the exploration highway and so on. We want to see how much this goal director intrinsic reward affects performance. So this GDR is actually implemented in the reward part. So you remember the alpha square root reward? Yeah, so we actually supplement the reward other than just having the zero and one from the environment. We also have a Manhattan distance. Uh, proportional to Manhattan distance kind of reward inside this reward term here. And then we see how good it is to help the agents. So, and then when, during the hippocampal replace step, we update the, actually not just hippocampal replace step, we like we update the intrinsic reward or update this go director intrinsic reward to be to be 0 0.99 square uh, of the intrinsic reward at the next step. So this is like some form of a decaying intrinsic reward. So IR of the current state is, is equals to like 0 0.99 of the future state. So this helps to like propagate the intrinsic reward backwards. I mean, this is the inefficient way of doing it, but you can also don't do this back propagation. It will still work. Yeah, so this is just how I did it for the intrinsic reward. Yeah, this one will be my next paper, actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing more experiments on it now. But the idea is you can see that with the intrinsic reward, while well, you look at this, you solve it in 230, which is like 10 times shorter than like if you don't use the intrinsic reward. So clearly the direction heading towards the goal does help. And then you see, you can even solve it with the first run. Yeah, go explore count does it. And explore count actually does it even better. So actually I want to challenge like whether you really need the goal step for the go explore. I mean, explore count works fine. So if you use explore, exploit, you can just start from the start state. So you look at this, the minimum steps to solve is two to four. It's even better. So you can see the same trend over here. This is better. But for like go explore count, this is actually worse. Okay, so why, why is this? I mean, the intuition I come up with is that you might actually get come up with a longer solution because the path initially, you follow until you hit the wall. So remember the walk maze? Let me just show you the walk maze again. 
the walk maze here. Imagine a hundred by hundred walk maze. You can walk all the way until here. Then you realize it's wrong. Then you need to backtrack. So because of that, you might incur more states than you actually need to. So if you like, if you were, to, for example, to teleport to a state, you might teleport to a dead end. Then you need to backtrack again. But for explore count, you start from the beginning, so you know that oh, it's a dead end. So I don't go that dead end anymore. I go somewhere else. That's why maybe your minimum step to solve is much shorter. Yeah. So GDR in general. It's actually a very helpful addition for learning. It goes very well with hippocampal replay. It makes your learning much faster. And now, I hope I've convinced you of this hippocampal replay and uh, intrinsic reward because I'm I myself quite convinced. However, it's still very small scale right now. My experiments. I'm trying to think of how to scale it up to like continuous environments, Mujoko and so on. So. I need to find a way to incorporate this into like policy gradient methods and other methods. I tried discretizing the state space for <laughs> continuous environments. It didn't work out too well. So uh, you will need some form of neural network for larger environments. Yeah, so this part here is an open question. I'm still thinking of it. Hopefully I get some ideas when I go in Europe, like see what other people do. So how to incorporate this hippocampal replay and this go directed intrinsic rewards into larger state spaces into more complex environments. The first question here is like, whether this explore exploit should be used as like the policy because I'm using explore exploit as the policy. But you know, if you use like AlphaGo, your Monte Carlo tree search is actually the way for you to choose an action. But you don't actually use this as a policy. You, you actually just use it to choose the action. You don't use this as the main policy itself. The policy is actually a neural network. The policy is a neural network. Yeah. So. I'm thinking if I want to do something like that, yeah, I mean, where would this hippocampal replay be implemented in a, in a neural network? Yeah, so these are stuff that I'm thinking about right now. Yeah, if you all have anything to chime in, you can just go ahead also. Uh, this is the third question. This, this is something quite interesting for me also. Like, you see, when we actually plan a goal, like for example, I want to drink water, I need to hold up this cup. I need to put this cup to my mouth. I need to tilt the cup. I need to put the cup down. Like this whole step is called like drinking water. But like, how do we generate this like goals? Like pick up the cup, put to your mouth. How, do, how does the brain generate these goals? And then how do we like bring about the actions to fulfill these goals or sub goals? And how, how are these intrinsic rewards being quantified in the brain? So these are open questions that I have. Yeah. And... Yeah, that's the end for my presentation today. I have no answer for that question because it's something that uh, people are still researching on. Hopefully, some people will find the answer. But the idea that we hit towards a goal or hit towards a sub goal, and then you can use like goal directed intrinsic rewards to like make your agent hit towards that goal faster. I think that idea is, is an interesting one for me. And then you can also use like hippocampal replay to help to make your agent repeat a successful experience. Yeah, if not, um, that's the end for my presentation today. Maybe I pause here for like a few seconds in case you want to ask anything. Okay, all good. All right, thank you.